Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Camp at Home um, in our summer chill with art session. My name is Miss Allie and today we're going to be doing some painting. We're going to be making these watercolor resist jellyfish paintings. These are really cool. We get to test out a few watercolor techniques and kind of go with the summer vibe and the water vibe um, and work on some jellyfish. So super fun. We're going to be using some watercolor some crayons and working with um warm and cool colors practicing a few techniques so that's what we're going to do today so i'm going to switch over to my art making board so we can get started so as i get my art making board set up i do want to give a shout out and thank a few people so of course i want to thank you guys for joining me again this week and i also want to thank um the College for Creative Studies and General Motors for helping us make these free art tutorials happen every week. So let's get started. What we are going to need today to make these watercolor resist jellyfish, we're going to need a few materials. So like I mentioned, we're going to be using some watercolors. And so I actually have a few over here set up. There's some watercolor paint. We're also going to need some crayons um i have a white crayon a few white crayons ready um and i'm also going to use some colored crayons i actually have a cool really um some fun crayons here different kinds um some pencil eraser sharpie is optional some other fun things you can grab are some salt and like rubbing alcohol again things you can get at the dollar store um and those i'll show you what to do when we get there um for our painting techniques um, you're also, of course, going to need a few brushes. I recommend a few different sizes, a cup of water, and, of course, some paper. So this is our end goal. And so we'll go through, and I'm going to go through step-by-step step how we do this. So first thing we got to do is draw out our jellyfish. And I always think jellyfish are kind of fun. Um, and you can do, like, a realistic-looking jellyfish or um, sort of a cartoon jellyfish. You could do sort of like a SpongeBob jellyfish. Totally up to you. So you can draw it out in pencil first, but because I want you to be able to see what I'm drawing, I'm going to draw mine out in Sharpie. Now, I have thick paper here. This is um, like mixed media paper, so I can do lots of things on it. Watercolor paper also works, or cardstock, anything a little bit thicker. So jellyfish, I always sort of start off by doing like a half circle here, and then I sort of make these organic shapes. If you've ever looked at a picture of a jellyfish, they're pretty, um, they're, you know, kind of funky looking. And they have these uh, sort of like tentacles almost. So I start to draw them here. And these are sort of like their um, legs, I guess. Or how they move around. Jellyfish are really cool if you've ever um, seen one in person or look up pictures of them. Because they kind of absorb all these different colors. Um, and they kind of move freely. I like to do a few of these, like, sort of tentacles, three to four of them. And I sort of do these pretty naturally. One side I do, like, a straight line. The other side I sort of do, like, bumpy lines. Again, drawing this out in pencil can be really beneficial. Then we need the under part of our jellyfish, which I'm drawing sort of in between here, connecting it up there. And I always add a few of these little squiggly tentacles again you feel free to look up a picture of a jellyfish and then i always add just you know a few kind of details on top of my jellyfish here and you can also do this in sharpie as well if you'd like um and this kind of just gives it and i always kind of have an outline in mind too and i think it just sort of helps stand out a little bit but that's totally up to you um another thing i recommend is kind of adding some bubbles in the background here and I also add these in now. You can do them later, but I always like to just get all the drawing out first. And I kind of add these little bubble lines there. And I do a few of them sort of off the page. There we go. Okay, so we have our jellyfish. Now what we want to do is actually take our white crayon. Well, first you'd want to erase your pencil marks. And then you want to take your white crayon. This is just a normal crayon. And you're going to outline everything in white. So this is part of the resist, right? And so the cool thing about crayons is that they're wax. 
right? So this means that anything that you're drawing right now is going, water is going to resist. So that's why we use watercolor paint. The water sits on top of the wax. It doesn't absorb down to the paper. So I just kind of, and I know it gets really hard to see it almost, oh, I just broke my crayon. It almost just looks like I'm just sort of drawing nothing, but you'll see it when we start doing the water. And I sort of like to just kind of color in a few of the spaces. Um, and you can do the tentacles, that's up to you, or the jellyfish legs. You could also just do some of the lines. That's kind of your, how you want to do it. And you can also experiment too, like try this out on another piece of paper first. So a few of the bubbles I'm going to totally cover in. Some of them I'm just going to kind of do around the edges. And you do kind of have to press a little hard. They're kind of like if you, if you moved um, your paper a little bit, you can kind of see where you were drawing. Okay. So I got a good, a good amount here on the edges, like I said. I didn't do it all over. Okay. Another thing you can do is you can take your colored crayons. Um, if you go to the dollar store right now, or even like Walmart, they all have all their like tons of fun crayon packs out right now. Um, and so I had like some glitter crayons and some pearl colored crayons and like pastels, and I was having a lot of fun. So I grabbed a few of you, those, and a few things you can do. I like doing the glitter ones because I think they come out. Um, you can also take these and add just a few sort of details to these as well. So I sort of just like coloring in a few of the spaces. Now in my jellyfish, I like to do the, the, um, the jellyfish itself we're going to do warm colors, so red, orange, and yellow. And um, the background, so the water, we're going to do blue, green, and purple, the cool colors. So I'm just adding in sort of a few details here. And again, the crayon sort of the resist. So this is going to go into where we're doing... Um, where we're going to go in with our warm colors. I just like adding a few of these details. And like I said, because I know these are glittery, they're like when the when it dries, you'll be able to see some of that shine. And I think that's just sort of like a fun little detail. And I see how I'm sort of just getting the idea of the lines here? Because we're going to go over that. You can also do that with the background as well in some of your bubbles. If you want to add in a little bit of detail in your some of your bubbles as well. So I'm going to push those aside and what we're going to do is take our, um, we're going to take our watercolors. And with watercolor, we want to activate the paint by making it wet. And then I got some paint on my brush and I'm going to start to paint. Now watercolors are cool because you can add a lot of water or a little bit of water. And you can do it in layers. And you can see where, like, you can tell where I started to draw because the wax is sort of going right over it. Or the paint's sort of going right over it. And I'm going to kind of add in a few colors here. I have, like I showed you in the beginning, I have a few colors on my palette here. And you can use big brushes, small brushes, that's sort of up to you. And I'm just, again, using my warm colors here to add in. I'm going to kind of blend a few colors and that's the nice part about watercolor. And in between every color that I'm choosing, I am dipping my paintbrush in the water cup so I know I'm not contaminating or mixing my colors on my palette. What I usually like to do on this bottom part, like underneath the jellyfish, is make that a little bit darker. If it starts to spread a little bit, that's no big deal. Because we're doing all of this color you know, the warm colors for our jellyfish. So I'm doing these parts. And this can be really fun and relaxing to kind of take some time and add in some, some details, like I said, to kind of do it however you'd like to see your jellyfish. And I always add, I don't know, I like doing layers. I always add a few different colors here and there. And then I also always do the tentacles as well. And if that happens, if you watch me just spray that a little bit, that's okay. 
and I'm going to try and stay in the lines as best I can, but it's also, um, it doesn't, it's not really a big deal if you, if you don't. It's not the end of the world if it doesn't happen. I always like to mix a few things here, here, mixing colors. I kind of planned out where, like, if I drew, um, yellow, and one of those then I was going to use yellow in that area. And again, having different size brushes can always help with this too. And if you want it to be a little lighter, you can always add more water. Okay. And I'm kind of doing this a little messy because I kind of like that look. And also, you know, for the sake of time trying to go through this so once you get it how you like it and you're like hey this looks really good then you are going to let this part dry so I'm going to get all my tentacles painted and drawn on here might even add a little pink in here just for fun why not pink's part of our warm colors and I can even do like sort of the outline of some of those other lines as well And it can be as saturated as you want it to be. Okay, so I can even take some of these lines and do a few of these. Kind of go over some of these lines as well. Again, however you'd like to do it. Okay, so whenever you think it looks really good, then you want to set it aside to dry. And I always sort of mix up this area a little bit. Okay, so whenever you're like, okay, this looks really good, I'm going to set this aside to dry. Now, I usually wait about 24 hours before moving on to the next part. So luckily, I had one prepared. Ta-da! Here's our warm colors, and they're totally dry. So now we can paint the background. Now, the background we're going to be working in our um, blues, purples, and greens. So again, I have some things here, and I always like doing a bigger brush for this part because it's really the background. We're filling up some space, and I like to mix my blues, my teal, my greens, purples all together. And I might even do a few dabs of things. And if you'll notice, I'm not getting super close to the um to the jellyfish just yet i'm kind of going to get all the edges first and i'll show you some cool tricks for this like i said i always like to use lots of different colors here and you can kind of dab them i'm sort of just messily that's that's the word i like to use when i'm doing stuff like this messily putting it down on here You can see where I started to do that white crayon. All right, so I'm going to kind of cover it all in. Like I said, greens, blues, purples are cool colors. And I'm going to get in those, those middle spots there. I'm going to try to the best I can. Again, this is going to be a good time for a smaller brush, so I'm going to get all those edges down first. And again, you can sort of like dip in other colors and letting them sort of mix and meld together a little bit. And while that's happening, I'm going to take my smaller brush and I'm going to go kind of in between here. Try and fill in these spaces as best I can. So this is a good reason why we let our other part dry so that it's harder to activate or... Um, get you know have that start painting so this way it's easier to work in fill in these spaces it doesn't have to be exact just do the best you can or if you want to leave those in between spaces um, white you definitely can it's however you feel comfortable with your drawing or painting you can kind of use some of this like extra runoff paint to fill in some of those gaps you might not even need some extra paint here. Um, another trick that you might find you need, like if you see a lot of it pooling sort of right here, you can kind of dip your brush in it and use it like paint in other areas, or you can take a piece of paper towel and kind of dot that up. Um, another thing, if you'll notice, I'm working on a piece of paper that I don't mind getting dirty because I know every time I make art, I get a little messy. 
So I know I'm working on something that it's not, you know, I know paint's going to kind of drip off the page because I'm going all the way to the edge. And I'm okay with that. I prepared for that. So I'm getting these edges here, and then I'm going to show you some really cool stuff. All right. I'll use some green here in the corner. Sort of like looking in an ocean. You can also like look up an ocean picture and then look at those colors. That's always something that you could do. Get some inspiration. Okay. Here we go. That's looking better. These are all materials that you can also purchase at the dollar store. So if you're interested in acquiring some of these things, you can at the dollar store or pretty much any store has a lot of these items. So if that's something you're really interested in, you really want to try out, you can get all of these items there. All right, so I have just about all my edges. There we go. Looking fab. Okay, so see that pooling? I'm just going to try and brush that out. And if it gets a little on your jellyfish, it's no big deal. Okay, so some cool things that we can do while the paint is still wet. Um, if you've ever used salt with watercolor, it's really fun. So it's sort of just taking some loose salt and anywhere it's wet, sort of putting it on here. And it creates a really cool texture because salt absorbs water, right? So it's going to kind of absorb what it's sitting on and make this really interesting texture. And I sort of like to do it all over the background. Anywhere it's wet, it'll kind of sit. Another thing you can do is take your handy rubbing alcohol, so ask your parents um, for some of this if you can. You can also put some in a, in a bottle or just sort of drip it here, and this almost creates like a tie-dye effect on the watercolor. You can see it starting to sort of spread out. And I think this can give a really interesting... Um, a really interesting water vibe or underwater kind of feeling to it. Again, this works better when... It's wet when the paper is still wet. And you can do as many layers as you want. And you can use the salt and this if you want, or just one or the other. It's totally up to you. Or neither. You can keep it as um, just how it is. So that's totally up to you. So when you get to this point, then you're ready to let it dry. So what we want to do is set this aside. And again, we want to wait about 24 hours so it's completely dry. And then... It should look something like this. Your final one should look something like that. Um, and at this point, if you needed to go over anything with your Sharpie again or add any other small details, you could. Anything that you wanted to maybe draw in. Um, or just leave it as is. So that's totally up to you. So at this point, we want to make sure that we clean up. want to put all of our... Um, paints and things away, all of our crayons away. Um, we want to wash out our paintbrushes with soap and water, leave them to dry, and then you can show off your really cool resist. And you'll be able to see, um, peel off some of that salt, and you'll be able to see some glitter and some where the crayons kind of resisted and stick up. So we have lots of textures. We have a really cool jellyfish painting using warm and cool colors. So thank you for joining me and hanging out with me today. Um, hopefully I'll see you next week. We have more videos coming your way every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday at 1 p.m. And feel free to check out our video library on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram for the rest of our videos. Thanks for hanging out with me again. My name is Miss Allie, and today we made these jellyfish uh, watercolor resist paintings. Um, enjoy!